When I say Shibuya, you could picture a hundred different things, with sites like the Scrabble Square likely at the top of that list. However, even amongst that list of a hundred, I doubt that Shibuya River would come up for most people. Yet it has existed in the region for hundreds of years. Starting right around here beneath my feet at Ten Muji Temple, Shibuya River has its style, which is quite near Shinjuku. But the only sign of it you're seeing now is a singular drain. Today I'm going to be delving into the river's past and following it downstream to see what hope it has for the future. While the river doesn't have the deepest history, we can find it shown in a few different areas. The most impactful I could find is an old map of Tokyo showing just how dominant rivers could be all over the city compared to now. We can see the Shibuya River right here. And in the art world, the Shibuya and the river at its mouth, the Furukawa, can be found in Hiroshige's piece on the Hido River and Katsushika's water wheel at Oden. And one description that really stood out to me stated that the water was clean and fireflies could be seen along the river full of fish. I don't think any rendition of modern Tokyo could equate this metropolis with widespread fireflies, but it shows just how far the city has come. And when these were created in the 19th century, water was a major part of Tokyo. That's not to say rivers have no part in the modern metropolis, as Sumidu in the east is still swarmed with visitors daily. This was once much more widespread. Aim Huber, a Swiss envoy from the 19th century, found that the best way he could describe Tokyo was to compare it to Venice. And while Venice has continued to sink into its watery roots, Tokyo has shown a completely opposite approach. Following the Second World War, the landscape of the Shibuya and Furu rivers changed significantly. The area quickly flourished as dozens of metal factories popped up alongside it. However, while you may think this was to take advantage of the transport route, in fact it was mostly used as a drainage channel for household and industrial waste, rather than remaining an area of beauty. And the 1964 Olympic Games proved a death knell for some of Tokyo's rivers. I've seen different reasons for this, the most obvious being that they needed new space for new roads to accommodate all the new foot traffic. To rivers filled with waste not fitting the country's modern image that is so desired going into this Olympic Games. Whatever the case, so many were literally paved over and still flow underground to this day, entirely hidden from public view. This is Cat Street in Shibuya. From where I stand, there used to be a bridge, but now it's just pavement. And if we listen closely, it's not too far that we can hear the very water itself out of the ground. Yeah, I guarantee if I would have walked over this area without doing this research, or for anyone else who would, it's just a street, the history is completely lost there, nobody knows what's beneath your feet. You can still see relics of the history above the ground, such as these barriers which used to mark the edges of the river, or these posts which mark where a bridge used to be. And as we continue our journey, we can see this street just bends for no reason in particular on the surface. But what's happening actually is that underneath her, the river is forcing the direction of what's above. Just because you pave over it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Additionally, by this point, massive improvements in technology had drastically reduced the importance of rivers in the day-to-day -day business of Tokyo. And in the case of the Furu River, a much more pressing need was required. The government wanted a new expressway to deal with the amount of increased cars to enable them to traverse the city with ease. Now, if you're in a massively populated and busy city like Tokyo, the space for such a project is quite limited, but there was an untapped resource of diminishing value, rivers. For hundreds of years, rivers were the best way to transport goods around Tokyo, and as such, they were mostly left alone. Most rivers had open skies above them, and so it was the perfect airspace for the project, and thus the Shuto Expressway was born. And so for the Furukawa, this was its fate. It's quite hard to even see the river or know it exists a lot of the time. In fact, this park I'm in is one of the few places you can get a good view of the river. And what does the river look like now? Well, for the most part, it's somewhat clear, but slow flowing, low volume and stagnant. When we view the modern day Shibuya River, there's no hiding the amount of water pumped in at this point just to keep it flowing. That's because the rivers also fell prey to increased need for sewage in the city, particularly the Shibuya River as most of its tributaries have been converted to use for sewage, leading to much of its water flow lost and therefore leaving it dry outside the rainy seasons. And that's been the status quo for several decades up to now, when projects starting in 2013 began to revitalise the area surrounding the river. This little area was built up to bring some waterfront action to Shibuya, with, with this very tall skyscraper, Shibuya Stream, also named commemorating its location next to the river. Credit where it's due, this is a nice relaxing area to get a drink or wander around, if very small in terms of its actual dedication to the river.
the lights on the river at night are as close as we're going to get to those fireflies, and it reminds me of their beauty. But as we look down the river, we can only see it become hidden in the direction of Shibuya Station. And that's about it. The rest of the river inland is underground leading directly towards the station and beyond up to Shinjuku, which is clearly never going to be dug out for the sake of a river. And this building wasn't all good for the river either. While this part certainly gained some renewed prominence, other areas were paved over to make way for the massive skyscraper, and that's another part of the river locked away irreversibly forever. The stream is only the start of the project for the river. A new era for the project started in 2019, aiming to revitalise several areas of the river, hopefully like this. While none of these plans can ignore the permanent changes to the river further upstream, downstream there's potential. There's a lot of not too high buildings, there's a lot of concrete around, but there's space that you could work with here. As part of the project, a few artists' renditions have been created, so we can imagine what these areas might look like eventually. Because you see... The project has a 30 year lifespan to complete, and that number was before Covid, so what that is now I have no idea, but there are plans. The fish that once filled the river are gone, the water levels are artificially maintained, and the public is heavily indifferent to the project as well. Shibuya is one of Tokyo's most popular areas with enough going for it, and few people are clamouring for a larger river presence. It's hard to persuade people that they want something they aren't even really aware of exists. But the restaurants in Shibuya Stream do give chance for this to slowly enter the Shibuyan public consciousness. One meal and one drink at a time. Areas like this are just a few minutes away from Shibuya Scramble Square, but for the most part are still entirely empty aside from a few benches to sit down on. But it's worth noting the river isn't without its advocates. The Shibuya Gabo Renaissance Group are constantly pining for its resurgence. On visiting their website, I was a little heartbroken to read some of the latest news on the river. So the 1964 Olympic Games proved terrible for the river. When the 2020 Olympics came along, that was a chance for Tokyo to show that it had learned its lesson from the past. The Olympics didn't mean bad things for the city's rivers. But sadly, once again, they failed this hurdle. There were originally plans for the new stadium site for the 2020 Games to incorporate the areas of the river around here into the design. But sadly, that wasn't to be the case. Why? They decided there wasn't enough car parks for the press. It probably goes without saying that because of uh, a certain event in 2020, there probably wasn't as much press as they were expecting. So the end result, infuriatingly, is that the river was blocked off for car parking spaces for no reason. There is still a light at the end of this tunnel though, because this river feature was built on the Tokyo Olympic grounds, which kind of heralds back to that river. It's a very small little feature, but at least it's there. However, I want to end the video on a good note. Even today, Shibuya's rivers are playing their part in keeping the city safe, even though it might not look like it. Except to aid the city in times of disaster, notably dealing with rainfall. The river at present is able to deal with 50 millimeters of rainfall and wash it away to Tokyo Bay. Heavy rain and typhoons are not unknown to Shibuya, and that means a few times a year without the citizens even knowing, the river's keeping them safe. The largest part of the upcoming project, more important than having a river that looks nice, is enhancing this capacity to 75 millimeters, so the river can make the city safer. So next time you're in Tokyo, give a thought to the river that was, and that hopefully one day may be again. Thanks for watching, and take care till the next one.